Hello and welcome back to the Learn Rel YouTube channel. This channel is dedicated to those who are trying to improve their technical skills involving um, things and concepts related to Linux operating systems and other skills such as working with uh, development tools such as GitLab or GitHub. Now specifically this particular video is going to be uh, one of many that has been added to the Learn GitLab for Users channel and this is not for advanced users, this is not for administrators, this is just for any user who needs to learn how to deal with GitLab and this particular video focuses on the topic of wikis wikis that are available both in GitHub as well as GitLab but this video will focus on the target environment of GitLab because I want to have a setup environment for home and I also have an account on the internet as you can see here this is the real world internet community for GitLab up on the internet as you can see here I have a uh, readme page showed up loaded up here and you can learn about wikis so uh, basically wikis are an easy way to find uh, this particular program project here rather is been developed specifically for this video and I made it so that it would be easy for anybody watching this video who needed to figure out how to do stuff on GitLab related to wikis could actually find these links down here. I'm going to keep this page exactly as it is unless somebody uh, gives me a comment and would like me to make some extra changes that I can uh, do very easily. I have a full-time job during the day um, but I do this channel to help improve other people's lives by giving them easier uh, access to knowledge. Okay, so um, what is a wiki? A wiki, sometimes spelled W-I-K-I with a capital W, is a server program that allows users to collaborate in forming the content of a website. The term comes from the word wiki wiki, which means fast in the Hawaiian language. A wiki provides a simplified interface. It is not necessary to know HTML, but it does actually help especially if you have a little bit of programming background or you're trying to develop it, you want to learn at least wiki so you can learn how to write wiki pages. So the back end for most wiki pages is just straightforward markdown language. Uh, MD is a nickname moniker for it, but markdown, as you can see it here, is the actual spelling. Uh, it is not case sensitive, just you need to look out on the internet for that. I have provided some links here, and if you mouse over them, when you access these from the internet, you can see what the links are pointing to uh, in your browser by looking at the bottom left corner of your browser. Whether it's you know Google Chrome or Firefox, Microsoft Edge, or even Internet Explorer. So please do trust the links. I'm not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. You can trust me. Uh, these are some basic things that I had collected as links for my coworkers in, uh, in, the net, in my work environment. And I thought it would be prudent to share them here. So maybe anthology is not the right word, but eh, that's what I titled this section. This is an easy to find project. So how do wikis actually work? Well, let's start off with the GitLab. And you can see I have other um, projects besides the learning about wikis project. And what you would do is typically think about the way you're going to organize your data sets of shared knowledge, like tribal knowledge maybe. So you might have tribal knowledge for a given project of code. Um, like maybe you wrote some Ansible program uh, playbook for that matter and you needed to s define how to make use of the program with something more than the readme md file. Well the readme md file, perfect place. But you might want to have a wiki for much more in-depth um, concepts and, and topics. So that's why you would do a wiki. All right, so typically if you're working in a business environment and you have maybe a government contractor or you're dealing with uh, lots of developers on different teams, let's say from a matrix perspective, um, you I don't mean the movie. <laughs> Uh, but basically you have different coworkers working on different projects over, um, you know, several weeks. 
you might want to have wikis for your high level organization, wikis for your group team uh, members for a particular uh, application you're developing for some customer, or if you are developing code generically speaking, but for um, use with very refined list of customers, you may want to have wikis for those specific programs. Programs uh, being either business concept uh, programs or uh, application code developed, written, compiled, whatever. So just think about how you're going to organize your wikis before you start writing them so you can figure out how you're going to write your wikis and where you're going to put the wikis and what data needs to go in which wiki in case you need to separate them. Sometimes it might make sense to link one wiki page back to a prior wiki page, like a top higher level wiki page. So do take these uh, constraints into consideration. So to demonstrate how to work with a wiki in a given project, I'm going to just, or a repository, I guess is another term. Let's go ahead and click on learning about wikis. Right. So this is the main readme. We saw this when I first loaded it up. But what I'm going to do is mouse over to the left here. And you will see, if you mouse up, there is a wiki icon. And it is the third one up from the bottom. Now, another thing that might make life easier for you if you're new to GitLab is to expand this panel to the left. Now you see the words, not just the icon. All right, let's click on Wiki here. And now you can see that you can enable Confluence Wiki integration. I don't have a need for that. I actually don't work with Confluence, even not uh, in my work environment, but uh, maybe you do. So you might want to do this. And if you've got that knowledge, great. All right, so let's go ahead and do create your first page. Now, when you do that, this panel is still here. And you can see that this is the owner of the project. So it's not team based. It's based on me. I created a project repository called Learning About Wikis. We saw that on the main page when I clicked GitLab. And then we are on the wiki, uh, let's say wiki feature right here. This reference is this reference. And then we're creating a wiki. Well, this part's kind of silly. But over here, you can clone a repository or you can have an edit sidebar. So let me click on this too. Oops. That didn't quite work out the way I wanted. <laughs> All right, create your first page. Let's go back here. And we will change this name to first page. That's just the title. And when you save this wiki and you open the wiki, it'll basically overwrite this part of the tab here. Format. Well, you could choose RDoc, Ans ASCII doc, or, or Markdown. I'm going to stick with Markdown because I provided the links on the GitLab.com page here on the README MD. So it'll be easy to get to this program project, find the README MD, scroll down, and find the links. Let's stick with that. So the cool thing is you can put in different things here. So I'm going to put in here hashtag first space page that when you open up this particular wiki that I'm writing live here, hopefully this won't take too long, this will show up bold, about the same place and same size and same intensity of boldness as the create new page here. And then going back to the links that I had showed you before on the Remi MD, you can put in tables, you can put in block quotes, you can put in um, text that's just free. Uh, you know, just simply type text. You can have very large text with a single hash, slightly smaller with two hashes. Uh, you can use heading size of H1, H2, H3. All of the things you can find for yourself. But again, I have provided a general list of um, links that work for GitLab and the Markdown language. The Markdown language is pretty uh, wild wild west I'd say right now in terms of its development because there are certain markdown syntax that you can use in GitLab that does not work in GitHub and certain markdown syntax that you can use in GitHub that does not work in GitLab. I'm sorry I apologize I don't have any control over it I don't write any of this uh, the language code so uh, just realize that just because you have a page with a markdown uh, page saved in your code repository or a wiki page that you download to move from git uh, 
hub over to GitLab, it won't necessarily 100% be compatible. So take that into consideration. Again, we're working here and if we take a look, we want to know what we've done so far, we can click on preview. And this again would be right about the same space as create new page, if you were to actually open this page. I'm not done editing, I want to go back to write. And I want to show you that you can see some uh, menu bar options here where you can do bold and, and italics and obviously strike through. You can do inserting of quotes and you can even insert code. Pretty cool. So let's do that. Let's do insert code. And what can we do? Um, what would be some good code we could write? Oh, I know. Bash echo dollar sign one. Let's take a look what that would do. And now you can see by doing that, basically the text I typed between the two bat ticks ends up having a gray highlight. It doesn't look this way in um, GitHub or in Markdown language used in other applications. So again, be aware of the fact that when you write code, when the way it works on one environment doesn't necessarily work the same in the other environment. I can tell you though that through the years of working with GitLab and updating and uh, upgrading, I've never had my wiki markdown, wiki page markdown uh, syntax change anything in a page that makes it look one way in one version and a different way in a different version. So if you are working with GitLab starting off and you're sticking with GitLab throughout the, uh, the entire life cycle of a project that you load up into GitLab, GitLab uh, home base, you know, in terms of community edition or professional base in your working environment or even the community edition network, you should be able to have pretty strong certainty that you'll be able to keep your project code and everything will be uniform and consistent. So take a look over here. You can add numbered lists. You can add task lists. You can add in uh, classable sections. I've never worked with that. That's pretty cool. And you can add in tables. And there's a markdown language for tables as well. But <clears throat> basically, when you do this, you can basically use the vertical pipe. And you need one on the left, one in the center, and one on the right. And if you add another section, another pipe, another section, another pipe, so on and so forth. And then this is like your uh, table header line. Uh, I know there's another line, another term for that we use um, in SQL language. Uh, I can't remember what it's called for some reason. <laughs> and then whatever you want in, you know, column one versus column two, row one or row two, and uh, that syntax will show, show up. We'll just say cell A1 and cell B1 here, cell A2 and B2. We'll say header A1. Sorry, A0 and B0. And again, if I do preview, you can see what it could look like by doing those simple little changes. If you want to insert a link, you have to use this kind of format. And that's kind of actually how I did the README MD page. So let me go ahead in here and I'll put in basically left bracket, right bracket left open parentheses, right open parentheses, and I'll put in here a title. How about some title? And let's do something silly. How about um, the YouTube channel I've got? Whoops, here, here. And how about here? And I'll save this. And I'm going to paste that URL in there. And since we are going to the YouTube channel, learn well on YouTube channel. Okay. And then I'm going to click create page. And here we are. If I click on this, now we'll find easy access for you back to my um, YouTube channel with all the different playlists. <coughs> And that's really basically it. I mean, you can go back and edit the page by clicking the pencil, create a new page, and take a look at the page history about what 
who has done what to the page and, and when. Um, and it's really simple. So thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy this video and can learn something from it. And please, if you have any comments, keep them polite. Uh, you got any questions, send them to me, and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Thank you.